everyone, welcome to the Phoebe Way. My name is Phoebe, and on the Phoebe Way, we talk about life in Germany, settling within Germany, schooling in Germany, find everything about life in Germany as an expat, as an African expat. This is the place for you to be. Phoebe is your girl, I'm your plug. Today, I have a very special guest here. It's different. I'm going to set, ask her questions, how things are, how things have been with her. And, and it's not other than my mom, Mama Fees, Mama Fees, Mama Fees, you're welcome. Thank you. <laughs> a lot of people have been asking me, Phoebe, feature your mom, because if you know Mama Aga, a lot of, of my friends call her Aga, Aga Baby, Aga, her name is Miss Agatha, and yes, this is my mom. We've been together in Germany for as, as long as I've been here. We came to us yeah, together yeah, on, yeah. The same, yeah. on the same day. Yes. yes. And... She has raised me in Germany, and today I have some questions for her as a mom raising your children in the diaspora, especially in Germany. How things have been for you, okay? So I have a few questions written down. Don't panic. <laughs> Everything will be all right, don't panic. Yeah, some might be easy, some might not be too easy, but let's start. So, um. If you might not know, we came to Germany together on the 14th of November 2004. Four, yeah. Four. Yes. So, the journey and how we came to Germany, I have a vlog on that, on my immigration story, but today the focus is on my mom, how things have been for her raising her children in Germany. So, mom, what informed your decision of moving to Germany and bringing us with you to Germany? Um. I came to family re re reunion. Yes, family reunion. And our, your father was here and he wanted me to join him. And I insisted I want to join him together with my children. At first he thought it was a joke. Mm -hmm. He I, I he I did he I did the um, um application the first time they rejected me. Mm -hmm. The second time they rejected me. And the third time, I applied with my kids, and they gave all of us the visa. Yeah. My reason of coming, traveling with my children is, I want to train up my children myself, and secondly, I want my children to be where to be with me wherever I am. If I'm sleeping, I know my children are sleeping. If I'm eating, I know my children are eating. Yeah. I want my children to be to feel the way I feel. That is why I traveled with my kids. Okay, so you basically wanted us to be where you are, so you have us, you have, we have your presence. Yeah, wherever. and you will not lack mm -hmm. any motherly love. Mm -hmm. So, those goals that you had of not being away from your children, all those plans you had, the reason why you left Ghana with your children, were you successful? Did you achieve those goals? Yes, it was successful because my kids cooperated with everything that I planned for them. They did not let me down. Oh. They made, they gave in their best in the language course and they made their way through the gymnasium and they all went to study. So my plan for my children where all my goals for the children came to pass Amen. because um, if they were in Ghana too they would have gone through all this and to the uni level yeah. but so if they are able to achieve that year I'm very very proud of them and they have made me a happy mother thank you thank you so throughout these past um, 16 17 years what have been your biggest challenges as a mother, as a mother, challenges were not so huge because, because first of all, I trained my children indoors. Mm -hmm. As we were in Ghana, my children never were not exposed to the public. Yeah, they were only exposed to the church family and my the family of my siblings. Not mingle with others, so they were they are they were used to reading their books playing indoors, watching their um, cartoons, their kids' program, um, work, working on computer. 
So when we came here, I did not have any challenges. Life here was used to them. They stayed indoors. They don't go out. They don't make friends. They just have to, friends. friends. Yeah. They just have to learn their books and any book that any learning aid that I will provide, they try to make use of it. So the challenges were not too much. But um what the the challenges they had was the school growing up as a um, foreign child mm -hmm. as a uh, black child oh yes but yes. that's true i was always there for them yes i was always there for them i tried to encourage them i try to i always make my children to feel that they are the best definitely i always tell them you are the head not the tail yeah. so anything that they are going through i'm always there to comfort them and by the help of the Almighty God, too, things were not so difficult for me. I gave them the room to follow their passion. And I was always in support of whatever, any good thing they are doing, I am in support of it. Yeah. I did not leave them off. Although I have to work, it was not easy. But I tried my best. But I always apologized to them that I did not, I did not, reach the level i want to reach and for me to consider the german parents my level was very low but okay. they always appreciate yeah. whatever i did for them so my challenges were not too much and as an african mother also i tried to leave many things behind mm -hmm. to cope with a German system. Yeah. And for, um, very fortunately for me, I did not make friends here, foreign friends. All my friends were the citizens. Mm -hmm. So that I would know the culture and all the things that I would need mm -hmm. as a mother. So this is what helped me. Okay. So in all of this, moving to Germany with your children, what would you say are the major disadvantages or drawbacks that if you, if somebody's considering bringing their children to Germany or if somebody's currently training their children, what should be the thing that they should be aware of, that negative side that they should be aware of? That's when your children come, even the Germans will not maltreat them, but the foreigners, they will maltreat your children. They will make your, your child to feel bad. Sometimes when they come to complain, I will be crying before them and they don't want me to go through that so they will decided not to tell me yeah. then i started asking so when i ask and they tell me i will be strong before them but i will go and hide cry and pray for them sometimes i pray with them together and i tell them they shouldn't think they are alone god is with them but they tried they tried a lot so if you are bringing your child here, you have to know that this, this, this challenge is there. And it is something that can lead your child to depression. Mm -hmm. So you have to take um, consider all these things. That your child will not take it, will not find life so easy in Germany mm -hmm. as a black child. Even the Germans doesn't have problem, but the foreigners. Other foreigners, yes. Some, even when they see that your child is doing well at school, they don't like it. Mm -hmm. They will be beating, their child will go to school and they will beat him up. He will come home crying. Sometimes you will have to go and meet them on the way so that they will not do any evil to your child. It is not easy. But if you place faith on God, he will see you through. Wow. So basically, the major setbacks, or, or not setbacks, but the major drawbacks or disadvantage is the racist issue. And um, as I said in my previous video, sometimes it's not even just the German kids themselves, but like the kids with immigration background also, they do the same thing to other kids. And I don't know why you would want to dwell on something or capitalize on something that you cannot influence, but you want to make somebody feel worse because of that it doesn't make any sense whatsoever but 
that is what is going on. So, if you were supposed to do it again, will you do it? Bring the children back to Germany? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I will bring them back to Germany. Mm. My children, if even today, they are, I will bring them. But that time, I will not come as a African mother. Okay. I will be an European mother. Okay. Because in what I have learned is they show interest in the passion of their children. They encourage their children in whatever they have interest in. Their goals, their dreams, their aims. They show interest. And then it is not the matter of chasing money. It is the matter of making your child. Sikaba, she's talking. Um, supporting your child. You chased money a lot. Supporting your child. Sometimes there are certain things you have to go with your child. You will say, oh, go, go. Mm. Go. The Lord is with you, but it's not like that. You have to be there. Your moral support helps the child. And the education system in Germany is what kills me. It kills me a lot because whatever my children learned in school, they are using it to help me myself. They help me a lot. They, they even, anything that I want to do, my children will tell me, Mama, this is against the law. You don't have to do this. You don't have to do this. And this <laughs> is what that. is helping me and guiding me. Yeah. Even at my workplace, anything that anything <laughs> that I would do, my children are what they are the one guiding me. And people think I am I know much, but it is it's not me. It's my children. Oh. <laughs> they are the one that will guide me. So if they tell me if I die, and I come to the world again, I will even like to have my children in Europe. Yeah than to have them in Ghana because the things that they learn because if you see you will see it in the train not that the white man the white lady doesn't have a car she has a car but she wants to the child to know the experience in um traveling with a train and then they will be teaching them and i like all those these things i made because even Ghana when your child asks you shut up <laughs> instead of us to have the I patience. I suffer this a lot. You ask too to, many questions. You ask too many to questions. To explain things to your child, you will even tell your child to shut up. Mm -hmm. But I will not do that again. I always oh. apologize to my children. Because you. I know that, the, I did not know. It's not that I know and I did it intentionally. I did not know. So if I, even any time I visit Ghana and I see a parent, I said, leave the child alone. Now, I, I have learned that the children have their own rights. But in Africa, no. It's only mama and daddy have rights. But in Germany, the children have rights. Yeah. So we will not, I will never trample on the rights of my children again. Mm -hmm. I have learned so much in Germany. And the ones that are implemented has also helped me. So I will always say that. If even anybody that want to train up his or her child in Germany, I will encourage the person to do it. Your child will not know how to lie. Your child will always be faithful. Will say only what he or she saw. Will not exaggerate. Will not um. Your child will not um um entangle himself with fraud or anything. No. They will know. They, 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 no, I will train my child here. And training them in Ghana. So no regrets? No. No regrets? No. Okay. So the last question would be, if there's any advice you'd give to other African mothers who are here doing it alone. And there's another thing too. Along the line, you became a single mother. Yeah. And there are other single mothers in Europe as well. It's, it happens a lot because cultural clashes leads to separation, divorce and everything. What would be your advice to them? My advice, my advice to them is, being a single mother or not, you have to be a mother. My son always said, says, Mama, you are my father and my mother. It is not easy. But in Philippians 4, 13 said, you can do all things through Jesus who strengthens you. And secondly, you have to avoid friendship. Unnecessary friendship. You don't need it. You don't need unnecessary friendship when you are bringing up a child. You don't need unnecessary telephone conversations. Yeah. You don't need unnecessary TV programs. 
you only stick to the programs that will educate you and your child. Friends that will motivate you spiritually and physically. Mm. Not friends that will come and be talking, uh, be saying things that child should not hear. Friends that will encourage you to be an European mother. Not friends that, ah, you have given your child too much chance. Go to the European mothers. They give the child, they even buy a kitchen for their child when, or for their um, female kid when they are growing. Maybe some of the boys have kitchens. Kitchens. Yes. So there are certain things that, you know, you are, you are um, spending so much on your child. That is your responsibility. Not if, if, don't uh, mingle yourself with people that have aim. I'm going to build a house in Ghana. Only that. We should not think about ourselves alone or the African parties we will go. If it's for me, if it was left for me alone, avoid all these things. Because sometimes, too, the reason why um, my mom is saying do it the, the German way is because at the end of the day, this is the competition that your child is facing. Your child is not facing African competition yeah. here. Your child is not facing um, other nationalities. We are in the German setting. Mm -hmm. And sometimes, um, the reason why my mom is also saying this is because I, I kept telling her, like, on Sundays, my friends, they are doing what they are calling Ausflüge. The family in itself is doing excursions. They are going to different parts of the, uh, of the country. They are doing things. They are going for hiking and all of that. But when we come back from, we go to church, we come back from church, and we have visitors, they'll be talking and talking, and our parents only have time for us because they have visitors, you know. And that's why she's saying some unnecessary friendships are not needed because Sundays that you're at home, you're not working, it's time for you to bond with your child properly and you know, talk to them, see what they are doing after school, what they are what they are and what the agenda is for the rest of the week. But because Mr. Soso and So has come with his wife, you have to sit there, eat for food. Talk, talk, talk till 8 p.m. when your kids are supposed to go to bed. So these things actually take a lot from us as kids. When our parents are so like in into the African community, and it's not bad if we know our culture and we are exchanging our cultural values with the African community, but too much of everything is bad. That's what I think. Too much of everything is bad. So have a healthy balance. And as you said, your children are your priority. And then what you, she also used to do was that we couldn't watch TV from Monday to Friday. So Saturdays was Junior's Day and Sunday was my day. And obviously on Sundays we have visitors in the living room so I can't watch TV anyway. So I was already with my books. I wasn't go. I was used to staying on my own and occupying myself. So I would be reading or I'd be on my laptop doing my homework or something. But TV is not your child mind. I see that a lot, especially in court. People come with their kids mind and then... The, the kids are making noise. Here, here, here. They'll put the phone. They give the child the phone. And the child is watching something, cartoons. It's not bad for your child to watch cartoons. But you ask yourself, that's a child whose mind is still being shaped. Why expose the child so much to yeah. TV? Instead of you to buy storybooks for yeah. your children. I always go to Vitra. Yes. There is a, it's a bookshop. And I buy books of 200 euros. Just for my children. Someone asked me. I've never seen any my, a parent that is there. I said, this is what I do. I used to do it in Africa before I came. So if I will be able to spend 200 euros on their books, I want them to learn. They go to library. I register them in library. They will lose their books and I will go, I have to go and pay. They yeah, will Ghana, yeah. destroy. Here also, they will destroy the books and I have to go and it pay. It wasn't me. But all the same, was I me. was not discouraged. I want yeah. the best for them. And now I am very, very happy. I am very, very certain that all my efforts were not in vain. Yes. I thank the children and I thank God and I thank myself also yes. that I was able to thank you. make it. First, you have to give your children. Your children have to be your priority. If any distance you have, you have to spend it with your kids. Yes. Spend more time with them. Let your children be your friends than taking, making friends outside. Make friends with your kids. And that's another approach that changed when, when we got in Ghana. She was like the boss and we're the, we're, we're subordinate, you know. She makes the rules, you, you, you make all the decisions when it comes to food. 
my my will was nothing. I like the person was supposed to make the rules, you know. But nowadays it's totally different. Oh, once we got to Germany, it became different. She would ask me in the morning before I'll go to school or on Sundays, what would you like to eat this week? Um, what do we do? Do we do this? Do we do that? And then gradually we we formed like a bond where we became like co-equals, like friendship. And once I realized that my opinion mattered to my mom, it also translated more into my actions. Like I want to prove to her that her putting faith in my opinion is not wrong. So my opinion is valid through my actions as well. So I want to prove that to her. So whatever I, whatever decision I make, I want to make it, make sure that the decision proves out to be a mature decision. So when your parents are always making the rules for you, I, I think in the in the early stages it's it's okay, like maybe six. But once I can talk and I can think, some parents should also give their children that leverage or also that say in, in their day-to-day -day activities. I think that helped a lot because sometimes my mom would make rules or make decisions I wasn't okay with. I always tried to do things on my own and then that's disobedience by the way. That's what it looked like, like your child was disobeying but your child was just rebelling against the system basically. So I think that's also another thing that my mom did here that helped us a lot, a lot. Yeah, so thank you for for adjusting and adapting that's a really a big thing like adapting to what was going on here and for example um, in Ghana yes another thing was in Ghana you would give us like rice and stew for lunch but basically it was always heavy food throughout but in Germany my mom realized that here it was sandwiches the kids were taking and she didn't want us to feel left out so if it's what she asked us I would say ma here they don't do like that so they do it differently she'd be like okay how do they do how do they do it and she was Trying to make us also feel okay whenever we open our lunch boxes at school, we're not too different. We, they, it wasn't something for somebody to come and pick on us on that as well. It's good to be different, but you 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 have to. How do I say? It? You know, Africa is different place. Yes, exactly. But here, adapt. you have to adapt, and yeah. I was hundred percent willing to adapt because even the children are not going to school with other things, but still they are bullying them. So if they are bullying your child, so why will you also give room for them to bully your child? If you love your child, you will not allow anybody to bully him. So instead of you to bring your child out for them, for him, to, for him or her to be a laughing stock, why don't you take your child in for your child to be the superior? This is how I saw yes, it. That's so true. For me to adapt, I considered many things. So how long will my child come home and be telling me things and I will be sad and I will be crying? Sometimes I wanted to take them back home. But I and I, I one German told me the way your children are and where they are, if you allow them to stay stay here, they will be great people. And if you take them back to Africa, you know they have laws and they have learned German and what and then and so okay, then I have to stay and struggle further. So mothers encourage your children. Let your children feel they are the best. Yes. Make your children your priority. Love your children. Adopt anything that you will adopt. Any system that you adopt in Germany to make your child a happy child. Please do it. Do it so that you will save our children from depression, from dropping out from school, from being what we don't want them to be. Hey, you for almost 30 minutes. No, no, no. <laughs> Cut. Cut. <laughs> so guys, we have come to the end of today's video. If you have more questions from my mama, please, please send in your questions. She will, she will definitely be back on here. She will definitely be back on here. I have another vlog planned with her. so. She'll be back. We have her back in Germany now because she was away for a while. And as you can see, we are looking hot and sizzling. <laughs> it's from IJ Clothing. Yes. IJ Frank. Uh, IJ Frank Clothing. IJ Frank Clothing. Yes. She is the she is the CEO of IJ. She was the one who did all this clothes for us. Yes. And IJ Frank Clothing, we are very, very thankful to you. Yes. So for I making us all look so beautiful with the Beautiful stuff. Yes. I like it. You know, I and don't have like wearing pocket. African way. But what you did for me, yes, I like mom, it and I'm always I wear it from Ghana to Germany. 
and I wear this, and you know, I started wearing it in Ghana from Takra Yeah, I started wearing African way. You know, I don't like wearing African way. Yes, yeah, so thank but you. This one's thank you, IJ. Like, I like it a lot. So. I have a full video with IJ clothing. I'm going to leave her details in the description box down below as well. Um, she's on WhatsApp, she's on Facebook, and yeah, Facebook and WhatsApp. I'm going to leave her links and her number down in the description box below. Even just blend it somewhere here. If you like what you're seeing, like she chose it, she chose the print. I just said I want something light, something airy, because you know, summer can be very hot in Germany. So she made this for me and for my mom as well. We're going to, I'll plant the pictures in here as well, but you no, know, I'll leave that for the next video so that you see what what good things we have in Ghana as well. So IJ Frank Clothing, if you are in Ghana, she is in Top Rally Christmas Team, just right behind the Total Filling Station. If you are abroad, she posts as well. She does um, worldwide delivery, so please, please check her out. And and say the Phoebe Way sent you, or Mama Phoebe sent you, or Mama Aga sent you. Let her know that we sent you. And yes, guys, and she's very affordable. That is one thing. She gave me a bunch of clothes, and it's I'm just surprised at how affordable it is. It depends, of course, on how much material you need and your styles, but. She's definitely affordable. She does bridal wear as well. So if you need something for your traditional wear and everything, just check her out. So guys, thank you so much for sticking with us at the end of today's video. See you same time next Sunday. Cheers. Ciao.